So today's theme is going to be no-bake cheesecake. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of an analogy that we're not going to actually use lights. We're not going to actually put anything in the oven, although we did bake by using a no-bake cheesecake that just went into the fridge. We still needed to measure, and that's where our light meter comes in. Now, we're going to do available light portraits. Now, available light can also mean just light that's available. It doesn't necessarily mean the sun. It might be a light fixture inside. It might be a reflector. Whatever we have to use, we're going to use to meter. Also, you might think, well, is using a light meter necessary for available light portraits? Cameras have gotten so sophisticated. However, we still have some interesting things to overcome. Where is the light coming from? How is the light hitting the face? If we're going to end up with someone that's backlit, we're going to need to meter the face and it might cause the background to blow out, but that's okay. Also, it's going to allow us to set the mood. Depending on where we meter, if we meter back to the light or if we meter off to one side, we can completely change the mood by lightening and darkening the image. So for our first section, as I mentioned, we're going to use full sunlight. Now, I don't want to have full sunlight in Kendra's face. Oh, and yes, this is Kendra. Hi. If you didn't see her before, she was Little Red Velvet, <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood. So if you didn't miss, if you missed that video, make sure you watch it. So we're, since we're doing available light and it's direct sun, I want to try to keep her face out of the direct sun. Because if we have her facing the sun, she's going to be squinting. It's going to be really deep shadows. I want to be able to use the sun, but not directly shining on her face, if I can avoid it at all. So what we're going to do is two things. One, I'm going to let the sun be the backlight. She's got very light hair. I'm going to let it go ahead and create a highlight right here. And then I'm also going to bring in a reflector so that we can angle the sun back into her face to light it up that way, rather than trying to overcome the shadows that are going to be caused from a direct sun. Generally not a good idea. Now, I've got my meter. I've got a Sekonic 308S here. And what I want to do is I want to meter for her face. That's all I really care about. The background isn't particularly attractive, but it's going to be out of, def it's going to be out of focus. So you're not even going to really understand what it is. I'm going to crop it accordingly, so we're just looking at her. And this is the kind of thing where your camera's meter is going to completely flip out because her face is actually darker compared to the rest of the scene. And if I went with what the camera said, you're just going to be a silhouette. We don't want Kendra as a silhouette. This is the subject. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to meter the light hitting right around her face. I'm going to make sure that it's lit the way she is. I'll be careful to position her face so that there's no dappled light on it. In fact, if you see it right here, We've got dappled light. You can see the sun is hitting her nose and on the top of her lip. Not good. There's no way to overcome that. So what I want to do is watch. I have a remote control for Kendra's face. So I want to turn her this way just so the tip of her nose goes in the shadow. And I need to make sure that the dome on the meter does exactly the same thing. I can't have the sun hitting it. So I'm going to meter from over here back to my camera position and I'm getting at 125th of a second, F4 at 100 ISO. Perfect. Now I'm done. I can put this number into my camera and shoot, and they're all going to be great. And also, I'm going to take a reading with the camera, and let's see what the camera thinks the correct exposure is. I know it's going to be wrong. We get in nice and close. Really nice. Gorgeous. I'm going to do a couple verticals. To Mix it up a little bit. Let's get you turned a little bit, turn your body a little bit this way, the other way. In fact, if you want, you can even put your elbow up on that post behind you, back up a smidge. Right there, nice. Beautiful. These are really nice. Love it. Beautiful. So that quickly, we got some great results. They really look gorgeous, and having the meter just cuts down any of the guesswork. There's no bracketing. There's no, oh, let me open up a little bit. There's no me looking at it and, and distracting Kendra from the flow of the shoot. It's just perfect. Just for giggles. Giggle? OK. That's our giggle. Just for giggles, I'm going to see what the camera thinks the correct exposure is, just so I have a reference for that. All right, so the camera thinks it's overexposed by a stop. So let's go ahead and see what the camera wants. Instead of F4, it wants 7.1, which really makes Kendra go deep in the shadow, which is really a shame. That's not what we want. So let's go ahead and just get a couple more, because these look so great. Yeah, what a difference. 
good. And now, even if I was photographing her with the sun directly coming this way, in fact, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna shoot up into the sky, and this is where it's something they call uh, subjective metering comes into place where I'm gonna use the meter. I wanna, again, meter her face in shadow. I don't care if the background blows out. That's okay because this is the subject. Now, she's got really light hair, so her hair might also start to blow out, but it's okay. It's a look. Uh, you see it a lot in lifestyle portraiture. Uh, in a formal portrait, I might be a little more careful about placement, but this can still work as well. So what I want you to do is look this way now. So I moved Kendra over to direct sun. She's completely backlit by the sun. The top of her head is really bright. But again, I'm more concerned about her face. So I'm gonna meet her right here. I wanna make sure the dome is protected. In fact, now I'm getting 125 at F5. So we've gained two thirds of a stop from F4 to five. That's what I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna position myself so that I've got bright blue sky behind her. Again, it's all about her. I don't care about the exposure of anything else. So let's go to F5. Everything else is the same. And I'm gonna get down low. Oh yeah, that's a very different look. Yeah. Love it. Now look above me, behind. Right there, nice. Yeah. Yes. So that's a very different look. It is a very soft look. However, because she has blonde hair that's very light and very reflective, part of her head is actually, the hair is starting to actually disappear. That's a look. I don't necessarily like doing that, so I want to do a compromise, although it did look kind of nice. It's very ethereal looking. I'm going to bring in a reflector this time, and I'm going to have it over here to light up her face a little bit. So that, what that'll do is it'll cut down the ratio of the bright to dark. Because if I were to meet her here to here, I would guess they're probably five stops apart, which is quite a lot. That's why this is disappearing. So it, by putting in a reflector and adding some light in her face, that will cut down the contrast ratio and we'll be able to have an exposure where this is going still very light, but not disappearing, okay? And we need mom for this. <laughs> mom. So I've got a reflector, and we have a voice-activated reflector holder. This is Karen, Kendra's mom. <laughs> it's a family affair here. Uh, so we brought in a white reflector. I originally tried a combination gold-silver one. It was so bright that Kendra couldn't keep her eyes open. So we just want something to add a little bit of light into her face. Now, if you remember when we were here, we were 4-5 F5 on her face, and the background, actually, just to do a test, is coming in at F14. That's a lot of difference. So by bringing in the reflector, we add a little more light on her face, we'll cut down on the contrast ratio. So Kendra, if you would look, actually look over that way. So I'm gonna get her in the same position. I still want the dome completely in shade, except now it's gonna get the reflection contribution from the reflector. And now I'm getting 7-1, lovely. That's great. So 7-1 to 14, it's a much gentler ratio. In fact, let's see, 7, 8 to 11 is one stop, two thirds, actually two stops. Uh, two stops between her face and the background, great. That's going to be easy to control. So 7-1, and let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's nice. Chin down a little bit. Bend towards me a little bit. Yeah, good. Love it. By bringing a reflector in and bringing up the exposure to 7-1, which from 4-5 is one stop, from F-5 is uh, two-thirds of a stop, was enough to allow me to still have her face lit well, but cut down a little bit on the brightness and having the background disappear. Just one more time, I'm gonna bring in the shiny reflector oh, no. <laughs> just to see if I can get Kendra to keep her eyes open for one. If not, I'll do a couple with her eyes closed just so we can see the effect of a silvered reflector. So we brought in a silver reflector. Actually, it's a silver slash gold reflector. It has gold stripes going through it. It's a little bit warmer. I don't like using solid gold. They're way too yellow, but this kind of sun bouncy one where it's silver and gold stripes alternating is nice. It adds a little bit of warmth. So I've asked Chris, uh, Kendra to keep her uh, eyes closed just to save her eyes because we're just gonna get a couple of quick shots. Let's see what the difference again is by using this reflector. Hold it right there. Okay. 
There we go. So I'm getting F9 now. So we've gone up another two thirds of a stop. We've gone from five to nine, which is one and two thirds stop. That's a huge difference. Let's see what F9 looks like by using our silver reflector. I'm gonna ask Kendra to keep her eyes closed and I'll count one, two, three. I'm gonna have her look like right at that building. Look okay. at the window, this the window above, so that she can open her eyes and try to not to grimace when you, <laughs> when you do it. Okay. okay. So F9 now with our reflector right there. Gorgeous. One more. One, two, three. That's beautiful. So even though it was torturing Kendra a little bit and I had to have her close her eyes until right at the last second, they worked beautifully, don't you think? Doesn't that look really nice? So good. The little bit of uh, warmth in the reflector with the silver gold uh, alternating stripes and a little bit of warmth to her skin. And by having her eyes closed until just when I needed them and giving her a spot to look at ahead of time made everything work beautifully. The contrast rate ratio is much less now. Uh, her hair is not overexposed at all. That's not necessarily something you have to do. If you remember the ones we did, they were very ethereal, yeah. they were starting to disappear. That's okay, it's a look. What we're seeing here is how we can subjectively meter and use or not use a reflector to change the mood of the portrait. So I think we're good for outside. Uh, we have some inside places to visit, so we're gonna look for some interesting window light. We're in G's Restaurant in downtown Warwick, New York, my hometown. Got Kendra and the rest of the crew here. And we chose this spot because there's really nice windows here looking out onto the street. And there's a couple things to keep in consideration when you're doing window light shots. What is the mood you're going after? So if, for example, if I meter back to the camera from this position, and by the way, since it's dimmer in here, I went to 400 ISO. So if I meter back to the camera, I'm getting F4 at a hundredth of a second at 400 ISO. However, if I meter back towards the light source, meaning the window, it goes from F4 to 5.6. That's two thirds of a stop difference. Now that's a lot for a portrait, and it all depends on the mood that you're going for. So for example, let's turn your head towards the window. So if I turn her towards the window, and I meet her back to the camera, that's gonna be a lighter look. It's gonna add some light to this side of her face. So that would be appropriate for a happier look on your face. If I wanted to go a little more dramatic, what I would do is meet her, go ahead and look right look to the window again. If I meet her back to the window and I get five, six, that two thirds of a stop darker is gonna have just this side of her face exposed correctly, but it's gonna get darker over here. So for that, I want you to have a little more serious look like not everything is going perfectly today. So understanding how the exposure is going to affect the mood of the, of the picture is important. If I have her smiling happily and I've got her in a dark contrasted situation, it just makes, makes her look like she's insane. Yeah, or convert, yeah. Or if she's looking really sad and I have it very well lit, there's a disconnect there too. So make sure your lighting matches the mood. Now also, in order to lighten up the contrast ratio, maybe I do want to have her looking towards the window, and I do want to have the side of her face facing the window to be exposed correctly, I can also bring in the reflector. So watch what happens. I'll get out of the way a second. As I bring in the reflector, you can see her hair gets lighter and darker, and we'll use that to cut down on the contrast ratio as well. This is more of a serious look. Tilt your head this way a little bit, right there. Beautiful. Again, chin down a little, lips together, smile. Okay, towards the window. Five, six, five. There we go. Right there. Yeah, good. We're gonna do a couple of window light shots, and we're not gonna use anything other than the window for our light. No reflectors, no nothing. Now, there's some subjective things going on here, and again, it goes to mood. 
Now one of the ways you can change the contrast ratio of the face to the shadow is something that might not be obvious at first glance, and that's just to come further away from the window. So for example, Kendra, look out the window there. If I meter outside, I'm now at 800 ISO. I'm getting, let's do that again. I'm getting F5 in an 80th of a second. And on my shadow side, I'm getting, well, 1.8, which I can't even go down to, so it's much darker. Uh, if I want to decrease the ratio of light to dark, the easiest thing to do is just to have her stay in the same position, but come away from the light. So Kendra, if you'd just come towards me and still look the same way you were looking, in fact, even a little more this way. So if I have her come out further from the light and meter, I just went from F5 to F4, so I lost two thirds. So that's gonna make the ratio of light to dark much less. I could still use a reflector here, but again, it depends on mood. Also, as we talked about earlier, if I meter towards the light source, which is the window, it's going to make this side of her face, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hook your nose. It's gonna make that side of her face correctly exposed. This side may go in a deeper shadow. If I wanna lighten the mood, and we're gonna go a little happier, then I'll bring the meter around so that it's in the middle of her face. Again, turn, turn towards the light. So rather than meter towards the light, I'll come over here toward a camera position and get a reading, and that's gonna cut down the exposure again. It's actually gonna open it up, which is gonna make the whole thing a little more light and airy. So let's do it both ways. So let's get you right up against the window, and I'm gonna meter out towards the light. Again, I've got F5 and an 80th of a second. Let's go ahead and get that one. Beautiful. Now, that's with a serious look because we're going for the darker over on this side. Same position, so look where you were looking. Now I'm gonna meter back towards my camera position and that brings me to 2.8 and I have an F4 lens. So I either have to adjust my ISO or my shutter speed. I'll just bring the shutter speed down. I have to actually go to a 40th of a second at F4 and it's gonna lighten things up now. Now you can be a little happier. And again, put your eyes where they were again. Beautiful. And wow, what a difference in mood. It's really amazing. Turn your face towards me. Lovely. Little smile. Yeah, that's nice. Give me, yeah, give me a big smile. Beautiful. Now go serious again. And I'm gonna go back to that original shutter speed. Just so we have that difference. F5 and an 80th. And holy cow, what a different mood just from doing that. So that's where the selective metering comes in. If you want light and airy, meter so that you're getting an exposure that covers both light and dark. In this case, back to the camera position. If you want moody, more dramatic, then if you're looking out towards the light source, the window in this case, meter out to that. And that'll keep this side of the face exposed correctly, but this will go darker and it's gonna create more of a dramatic, moody look. Sounds simple, isn't it? It really is. Now also, the last thing I mentioned, if you just want to cut down on the light ratio, in this case it wasn't that strong so it was okay, but just have your subject come away from the window. Come a little bit more this way. And what happens is, as she comes away, even if I meet her back to the light source, where we were at F5 at 80, now we're at 4.5, so we lost a third of a stop. Take another little step towards me. And again, if I meet her back to the light, now I'm at 3.6, so we've lost two-thirds of a stop. However, this side of her face, or head, hasn't changed. It's getting the room light. So what's happening is the difference between here and here is getting much less because she's getting away from the light source. So that's a way you can balance out contrast without using any lights or any help. But the results that we got, just by changing the mood and deciding where to meet her, huge difference. Think so? Yep. Okay. Before we go completely inside, I found this really nice spot out here, kind of along the creek, and I want to do one other thing. Sometimes you don't have a reflector available, sometimes it's too big, sometimes it just doesn't work. So I brought a little battery-powered video light. As bright as these might look, they actually don't put out all that much light. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and meter back towards this, where the light's hitting her face. I'm getting 5.6 at 125. And let's see what adding this video light does to the other side of her face. Because if I meet her without it, 
back to the shade, I'm getting 2.8 at 125. And what I can do is re-meter, get pretty close, and get 3.6 at 125. So that brings it up two-thirds of a stop, which will just be enough to open the shadows a little bit, kind of do the same thing we did with the reflector, but in a much smaller package. So let's go ahead and get some shots. And I'm gonna put Karen to work again, too. <laughs> Okay, eyes to me. Bring it in even a little closer. Again. Wait for the people in the background to go away. Good. So now it's time for our last section. We're going to use available light. So what exactly does available light mean in this case? Well, what we're talking about mostly, in this case, we just have light bulbs. Headlights, neon, whatever happens to be around. Now again, a light meter is gonna tell us what's hitting our subject, doesn't care what's going on back here. If you use your camera's meter and there's a bright background like this, it's gonna underexpose the subject. Again, we've got the directional metering depending on the mood. So if I meter from Kendra back towards the piano, I get F4 to 50th of a second at 1600 ISO. Great, so I can go ahead and do that. If I wanna lighten the mood like we've done in the past, I can come around a meter here, but it's gonna still be relatively dark. I'm gonna add one more light for that just in a second. So let's first get this. So if you look at the piano, so F4 F at a 50th of a second at 1600 ISO. Play the piano for me. That's lovely. Okay, look at me. This is more serious now. So I don't like the, the amount of light that's available here, so I wanna to add to it a little bit. Again, I've got my little battery powered video light. Kendra, if you look at me. All right, Kendra, so look, look at the piano. Let's get this light over here a little bit more and even in a little closer, about right there. All right, so we have our continuous light. I wanna see what that's doing and I wanna see what's going on in front. Perfect. So this is, with this combination, this is making this light one third of a stop less than the main light that's coming into her face from this side. I've got F4 here, back to this light, I've got 3, 6, third of a stop. It's gonna be a very gentle light ratio, but I'm gonna use the F4, because I want this to stay a little bit darker. Yeah, that's nice. Look towards me a little bit. Beautiful, one more. All right, so let's sum up. It's clear, I don't like to guess. I wanna know that I'm getting the best image possible right at the first shot. That's the simple reason I use a light meter. I find a meter also helps me to better define the mood of the portrait. It gives me the information I need to make creative decisions on how light or dark I want the subject to be while protecting the highlights that I need to keep detailing. Just like our measuring cups we use for baking, the light meter gives us the exact amount you need as a starting point. You can then flavor to your own tastes. And speaking of which, yeah, we haven't even been able to wait. It's time for cheesecake. Cheers. <laughs>